so much to everyone for their contributions today and thank the Minister for being here. I've uh, recovered a little bit from my nervous jog up the stairs and I'm a little bit calmer now that we're on the other side of uh, my first go at this. Um, it would seem that we're all in agreement around the, the room on this topic um, that student nurses and midwives should be paid while they are working. I think it's very clear from their testimonies that I read into the record today that student nurses are working from their first year all the way up to their final year. And I know we're having a slight dispute as to, you know, there's, there's technicalities around what is defined as work, but they are working and there is no question about that. I do have to say that some comments made by some people not said in here today that student nurses aren't, what they're doing isn't real work has been deeply hurtful unfounded and really uncalled for and I have a nurse here there who said and to see the government tell us we aren't doing real work is a huge kick in the teeth. I've never been so hurt and upset by a comment they have no place making. I truly wish they could spend a day in my shoes and see what they, uh, they have to say for themselves then. And I think there's a key point there that uh, none of us in this room have spent a day in, our nurse, in nurses' shoes, or actually maybe someone has in the room and I just don't know your, your background, um, but I'm unaware. Um, but we are not on the front line and we are not nurses. So I hope that the testimonies give an insight into the reality of students that they're facing on the ground. I just want to quickly address some of the issues that have been raised and, and I briefly alluded to this around work. You know, student nurses and midwives have actually been working for longer than the pandemic and will continue to work after the pandemic is over, whatever that looks like. Um, so I have to say that while we do have a need to deal with the additional workload undertaking over the past 12 months, um, I'm still very firm in my belief that we need to recognise that student nurses and midwives from first year onwards have been, are currently, and will continue to work. Um, and therefore I, I do still believe that this legislation is appropriate. Um, I want to just respond to the statement that this might set a precedent um, to pay people who are working or training while a student and I assume that it will uh, strike no one as a surprise that as a former head of a union and a student activist that yep I do indeed believe that all people should be paid for work um, and that that line between work and training is thin to say the least um, and, and, and you know I'm, I'm, I know a journalist asked me they're like do you think everyone who's on training or working should be paid and I said yep and there was just a deathly silence, but I am going to continue to be very firm in that belief. Um, so, you know, for example, I certainly support SIPTU's calls, for example, for radiographers to be paid and other calls coming up the line to pay students who are working. I do not think that we should build the public sector on the back of unpaid labour. Um, there's also been a reference that we need to keep nurses and midwives here, like that we have a shortage. And I would say that this is common sense, therefore, that we should be treating our student nurses and midwives better. We should be paying them, we should be treating them with respect, and we should be valuing the contribution that they make from first year the whole way up. You know, to treat people poorly at the start of their careers is simply an incentive to leave as soon as they can, to leave and go somewhere where they will be paid well, where they will be respected, and where they will have a good quality of life. So I would say it is a bad business decision to not pay student nurses and midwives. The evidence is there. We have high rates of emigration, nursing shortage, where uh, overseas campaigns to import and um, recruit nurses. So even from a basic business perspective, we have got to get this right because student nurses, whether it is agreed with or not, want to be paid, feel that they need to be paid, and because they're not being paid, are making plans to leave this country. In 2014, when I was president of USI, we did a student survey of student nurses, and 93% of them said that they were considering emigrating. 93% is a bananas number, and if we were to write this down as a business model and say, this is how we're going to treat them, and about 93% of them are going to think about leaving at the other side of it, we would not get away with this as a proposal. So I think we just need to be very clear about that. And you know, the best education system in the world, but are we, therefore getting the, best, the benefit of having the best education system in the world if these student nurses and midwives are emigrating the way that they are. There's no question about the commitment to teaching and learning, but I will refer to my point to see, uh, you know, how I, I fail to see how payment of any form, um, and you, your minister, have agreed, you know, to a hundred euro um, weekly stipend, so it seems that we might be splitting hairs over what we call it, and maybe that's for legal technical reasons that I don't yet quite know as a still relatively new to this, but, you know, we simply still need to find a way to go forward and there needs to be a financial remuneration for the work that they are doing. And I would say that's probably the simple, simplest way to look at it. They are doing work and there needs to be some sort of financial remuneration. And I'm very happy to sit down with you, Minister, and we can figure out a way to whatever that financial remuneration is, whether it's through this legislation or another way. I will wrap up very quickly here by saying, um, 
that telling students that we are refusing to pay them to protect their learning isn't going to cut the mustard with the student nurses or midwives. Where there is a will, there is a way. And Minister, I believe that you are a clever man, so I'm sure you can figure out a way and a solution to this. If what is going to happen and between now and, and, and this bill being sent into the ether, and that's to quote a government press secretary, then I implore you, Minister, to sit down with the unions on this and find a way forward. Finally, I want to once again thank all the student nurses and midwives who are helping hold our system together, and particularly thank those in Bowman today who are holding a very special person to me, one of my best friends who are looking after him today and have taken very good care of him, and I want to thank them, particularly on the record, for the care they've given him over the past week. Thank you very much. Thank